Konnichiwa. Welcome to the first in my tool tutorial series called VTuber Tools. I'd love to help you unlock your potential in content creation. There are a large number of low cost or even free options that others have put together for the greater VTubing community. I thought it'd be fun to highlight what's out there, not only to teach you how easy these tools are to learn, but you can hopefully get some inspiration for your own streams and content across all platforms. Our first tool tutorial today will be how to get a quick and efficient PNG available to use for VTubing related activities anytime. Whether you're looking to get started streaming, maybe you need one for a collab, or you just need extra PNG assets of your avatar to play with. You can also use the PNGs we make today and the other tutorials I have planned for the channel. Today, the software we'll be using is VWrite Studio. VWrite Studio has been the go-to software that can help you build a 3D model from scratch. And with the latest stable release, it's brought even more preset options to put models together also very, very quickly. Huh? But Nessie, you just said that makes 3D models. How does that help us? Very true. But I want to focus today on his capabilities of taking pictures and posing. I use it myself very frequently to take my own PNGs because of what it has to offer. Also, a big factor here that I'm heavily taking into consideration with this tutorial series is the software itself is widely accessible and we already know models made within it are okay to use freely for VTubing and commercial purposes. We don't need to be double checking licenses or other details that can be a hindrance from other websites or games with avatar making tools. Let's get started. VWrite Studio is available as a download straight off their website, vwrite.com slash and slash studio. It is also available straight off the Steam store. When fully installed, you can now design your character. With the stable release, there are a lot of presets to work with and that can make things build up very quickly. I won't delve into capabilities of VWrite Studio too much today, but if there's interest in a character creation tutorial, please feel free to let me know in the comments below. I will be using my PNG Chan for our tutorial series. I made her in under five minutes real time. Once you have a character to work with, remember to save your progress. Now we're going to click on the camera icon and over in the top right. This will now bring up the photo booth screen. You have one set of options on the left hand side and one on the right will be those sections expanded options for customization. First, let's choose pitch size and you can pick the preset picture size that meets your needs or play with the slider options if you need something more specific. I usually choose the full HD or 4K options for my own needs and edit as needed in my photo program. You can also choose to do this later or change it again anytime. Second, we will now change our background. Now, unless I am wrong on this, I have been unable to figure out a way to output a true transparent PNG straight from VRED. So we will use the magic of chroma key. This means using a bright background color that we will edit out later to ensure the image is an actual transparent PNG. No worries, I will also be showing you how to edit them while using free options. Here's a quick tip. You also have the chance at this point to add your own background, maybe for a specific image or promotion, or you wanna showcase your overlay. You can remove it swiftly with the remove background tool when you are done. For this character, I will be using the very common bright green to chroma key out. If your character has green elements, then you could use a bright magenta or bright blue. Experiment, find out what works best with your model and design. Some quick shortcuts to moving around the model in the photo booth space is right click to spin her around in place, shift and left click or middle mouse to move the whole body as is. Mouse wheel to zoom in or zoom out. Let's head back over to facial expression. Here we can begin to customize our expression for our photos. Since we will be focusing on taking images for a PNG tubing type purpose today, getting a simple smile or neutral look and an open mouth version will be our main goals. I'm going to first turn off the auto blink so we don't accidentally blink during photo taking, just like someone tends to do in every family photo. You can now set the eyes to either always follow your camera or manually adjust them. Having them follow the camera works best for our goal today. But if you're posing for a picture with a particular look, then you can also change them as needed. Sync gaze is an option if you want to change the position of the eyes together. This applies if you are moving them manually. Now we have a lot of sliders to work with. It may seem super overwhelming, so I do suggest to take some time to click every category so they collapse and it's much easier to find what you want to change. 
Something that you should know about these sliders is that they can stack. That's right. So let's take this for example. Move your base expression to maximum smiling and then add the specific smiling slider under mouth. This will give you a mustache in this case, apparently. So change things around and experiment. You can mix and match things around from all categories. So adjust your eyebrows, change up the eyes, make very unique expressions if you so desire. And yes, if you were wondering, manually typing in numbers also adjusts and contorts the face to whatever you're looking for. Just don't expect things to not be cursed. Quick tip, just a quick reminder that these base expressions at the top are the same as your basic facial shapes, also known as blend shapes, that can be adjusted from the expression editor right in Vroid. This is located over in the original face area when making your model. If you want to quickly swap around expressions or save something under those expressions, you can also do these ahead of time. As an example, something I like to do with my models is to make the close left and right options look more like a cute wink. I'm going to give PNG Chan a cute slight smile with a little thing. Why not? Now, how do we want the rest of her to look? How far back should the camera be? I'm going to focus on a waist up photo for PNG Chan today. Now it's time to strike a pose. What you'll see as options here are animations one, animations two, and posing. There are a lot of fun options already preset in Vroid. You will notice many of these are actually animations. I definitely suggest playing around under both animation options for a bit to see what you have available. While the animations continuously loop, you can actually pause them at any time, right next to the camera button that helps us take our photos. Quick tip, you can also record an animation and edit out the UI in a video editor for any cool stream or social media assets. This is exactly how I made my maid greeting redemption. What if the available poses still don't seem to work for your project though? There's still one other option that can help you get exactly what you're looking for, and that's the posing area. Once in the posing area, you can move the model however you please. This means you can do very custom poses to help bring out the personality in your character. This is definitely the most advanced option it might take a long time to get things looking exactly how you want. And it can honestly be a little frustrating, especially if the model's physics push back against what you want. But it's a great option to play around with and could help you come up with some fun ideas. There are even a handful of presets that you could also work off of, so you don't need to start every pose from scratch. You should also know about the hands. They can also move around in a few unique ways, and each hand pose can also be adjusted with an intensity slider. Unlike with expressions, manually putting in a number does not seem to change them. If you want to see your pose without the controller nodes in the way, uncheck the controller option in the top right to remove them. You can leave this checked on though. When taking your photo, the nodes are automatically turned off. Keep one thing in mind, if you are really happy with a the pose, there's currently no way to save something as a preset. So try and take your photos with your favorite pose as much as you want, as the next time you open the program, all posing will be reset. Once you're happy with how your model looks, it's photo shoot time. I'm going to take at least four photos today to use for our future tutorials. We've successfully gotten some great shots. Now, how do we get rid of that pesky green background? I will show you two quick ways to remove it. And both options are super easy, require zero photo editing experience, and 100% free. Option one also requires zero downloads. We are going to head over to the website photop.com. It is a free online photo editor that can be used anywhere, anytime, and support a lot of different file formats as well for your needs. You may now either open the files from the Photop browser or just drag and drop them straight in there. Now, all we have to do is head over to select by color range. Click on the green so it's selected and click OK and bam, all the green should now be selected. You can now hit delete on your keyboard or head over to edit and clear from the menu options. Now you can deselect by hitting shift D or hitting the selection tool and clicking the canvas. All you have to do now is save the image as a PNG and you can continue the same exact process with the rest of your images. My files exported showed up in my downloads folder. I'm sure you can change the saved location somehow, but for now I'm only working off the defaults. And really, that's it. The other option you have is using a free photo editor, such as GIMP. 
It's an open source that can be used on just about any operating system, even Linux. Download and install, just like any program, and open it on up. The options work basically the same, with some minor wording differences. And if you're curious, here are the two PNGs side by side from each program. Can you even tell any difference between them? Both options work just as well as the other, so choose your own destiny. I truly hope this first tutorial served you well. What kind of PNGs will you put together? What will you use them for? Did you have any questions? Was there anything unclear? Please feel free to let me know in the comments below. I look forward to putting together some more tutorials for you very soon. Any ideas? Feel free to also leave them in the comments. Remember to take care of yourselves, and hopefully I could see you next time.